Yeah. I'm a robot. We've uh, definitely managed to pass the Turing test, I think. There he is. There he is. There we all are. Um, did you make yourself host, Bruce? Did you do it? Not yet. Are you going to? Oh, reclaim host. Sure. And then, funny enough, when I reclaim host, what I do is I go then to you, make your co host. That's just something I do. <laughs> uh, it's something I don't do. Yeah, but you know, we can give you the in training moniker if you like. Mike would yeah. do it. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you, you probably <laughs> should put me down to in training because, yeah. Hey, so so I've switched over from uh, places we can go, we can go places because we can go places now uh, to what I'm doing. <laughs> we, we switched over to what I'm doing. And so this is uh, my next project. I'm visual pinball. This is so cool. Is anybody familiar with this stuff? This visual <coughs> pinball stuff? No. At no, all? What? Okay. Well, let me let me show you what the deal is with this. This has actually been going on for years. I, I wasn't even aware of it until recently. But it's been, uh, people have been doing this for 10, 15 years, I guess. Huh. But this, this part here. Is a screen? It's a 4K television monitor. Yeah. Wow. And cool. then this is just a regular like PC monitor or something. This is sacrilege. This is sacrilege. Oh no, this, this is, is way definitely cool. not. This is like new school, old school. <laughs> new school, old school. But they have the these pinball games are they have like hundreds of them, and they're all free and open source. They have a they have a pinball designer that's available to anybody, so you can design your own pinball table, or people have have built them after, or designed them after um, real ones. So I'm, of course, going to get the Batman 1966 pinball game like immediately. That'll be oh. one of the first ones that I play in the Star Trek pinball game. And I don't know. So I'm anyway, I have... how the physics are on them, because it's sort of having oh, played a good. few of these things, they're, they're, oh, they're, very they're good. okay. But I don't know. So just the, the randomness of an actual ball bouncing around just to me feels like it's going to be a little more genuine. But uh, hey, well, I don't know. Whatever. Come over to my place, Mike, and we'll play it. Cool. We'll see what you think. <laughs> well, look, you can get, get like you get like a real plunger and real buttons on the side and the coin drawer. You got, I got a. There's a lot of things I need to acquire. To make I do like the look of the case, happen, so the case looks very good. Isn't it neat? Yeah, you can make it. I mean, this is not mine. This is someone else's build, but um, I've got some ideas. Plus, you can put in things like when you when you hit the flippers or when the ball hits something. Um, Little little actuators on the side will thump the cabinet, so it feels like the ball is. Hit. Yeah, I was, I was, I was going to wonder, wondering back. how that that whole thing would happen. Yeah, I, I was at my buddy's place a month ago, and he's got uh, running Mame with one of the old consoles with the really oh, yeah, I joysticks too, yeah. and everything. Um, yeah. And uh, I, he basically was waiting <laughs> no. for me to show up so that I could upgrade his sound system because he had a terrible little tinny speaker running in it. So we put and a much he's better speaker in it. Yeah. Uh, I am a hard time. I can see. And, and it was frustrating yeah. because the sound varied completely with volume from one game to the next. Oh, it was really irritating. Yeah. So. yeah. I no. No, I, uh, I've, I've got a, um, a sit down uh, console too. You know, you sit two sides, one of the old Space Invader yep. type ones. Yep. Yep. It's got the proper jammer controls, JTEC or jammer, I forget which ones. Mm. And um, yeah, you sit either side. It's brilliant. And it's got, I think it's got 32 or 64 of the original ROMs. Uh, yeah. So they are the authentic ROMs. And, that's, and it's broke at the moment. Um, the actual tube's gone. Hmm. I'm oh. trying to find uh, a, a local-ish repair shop, a good old-fashioned TV repair shop, who can repair 
what is a, a, the CRT screen? Right. And they said, oh, just rip it out. You know, uh, no point. Just put in a flat panel. We'll, put, we'll do it for a fraction of the price and just put in a flat panel. And mm. you're just going to wipe the value off it. You're just going to lose all the authenticity. So, no, I'm, I'm going to wait. And worst case scenario, is I'll just buy an old TV and get the soldering iron out and get a bit busy. Um getting it in there so uh yeah so does, I, I can't does get your stereo have CD. tubes in it though that, that's my question andy <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be the no 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 oh, oh my oh my no no yeah. no no yeah no i, was just I know what you mean <laughs> i'm wondering how old school you are here because I, I i'm not a tube guy myself i find tube tubes so i don't like the distortion that comes out of tubes so i'm a definitely a transistor guy when it comes to stereos but the way you're talking about it with this i would assume it's just when you tubes for our, arcade games you yeah. okay. you're a main a main it's not going to have the same feel and so on for me as a as a true authentic cartridge and so on or mm. ROM as it as it were. But doesn't Mame use the original ROMs? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Free software it's still, emulation. It's still an then. emulator, though. It's still an emulator. Yeah. So free software. So. It's I, running computer it's, code. It's 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 like what? <laughs> it's, it's all up. To, it's just your preference. I mean, I I built an arcade years and years ago, and I had a tube TV in there, like a third two inch sitting in there in a nice big cabinet and that thing is just too heavy and when i moved i was oh, like wait, I'm, wait, done it's with this. <laughs> I'm done with this and so i just gotta put a flat screen behind it and it's nice and sharp and i like it so i don't i don't worry about that you could always degrade your flat panel if you wanted to match it up or something i like scratch it with your car keys anyway. or something I'd be surprised at just how hard <laughs> literally before i come out to france i was making other phone calls to try and get the thing repaired yeah. and i'm oh, sure I was looking for a basically an old school TV repair shop, and uh, they just don't do them. All no, the, 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 because they're they're tired. They're, they're, all those guys are dead. <laughs> but I'm willing no. to give them money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, they don't you know how. Yeah, it's like fixing find, old tube. T- yeah. It's like finding it's, somebody that's going to write a clarion for DOS application. It's just they don't, yeah. these people don't exist anymore. You know, I'm not yeah, going to do that. To, no, exactly. Exactly. Right. Moving on, John. Moving on. Now it's that we've quickly, trashed, I've, I've got the screen. Completely. I've got the screen. I've got a computer coming in today, and my weekend is taken up. That's what I'm going to be doing: <laughs> is putting this together. It'll just be sitting on tables and kind of mocked up, right? Because I don't have any of this other stuff. But uh, yeah, I'll let you know how it goes. Well, it's yeah. interesting to see it uh, develop. It'll be cool. 4K, 120 hertz. It'll look nice. Uh, yeah. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live. This is the Clarion Live. Uh, I was going to say the Clarion Live arcade version of the weekly <laughs> webinar, but you know, maybe not. Um, see it and learn it and share. This is webinar number 655. Today is April the 8th, 2022. Clarion date is 80820. All webinars are recorded at Clarion Live. Please join us on Skype. We're live streaming right now to three people, one of who likes it. So that's all right. That's more than we get usually. <laughs> So we move forward. Your host for today, today's webinar, myself, John, is here with us today. Bruce Yay! is with us today. Andy is with us today. Yay! And Mike Hansen Woo! is with us today. Nice to be here. <laughs> it's nice to have you. <laughs> All right, we have rules. All attendees are muted. That means we can't hear you. Type your questions in the questions box. We will read them to the presenter. If you want to speak, we encourage you to do so. Please raise your hand and type the question box. Finally, auction the last house or hotel. So in Monopoly, there's 32 houses and 12 hotels. And once they're bought, they're bought. Nobody can build any more houses or hotels until something gets turned back in, right? Well, this is something I didn't even know, but apparently when you get to the very last hotel or house, it goes up for auction because somebody is, else is might want that last Is this a real house. rule or a made up yeah. rule? Because it, no, no, it's no, kind of like that, real rule. The, the putting money on free parking, you know, the people, if you put a $500 bill on free parking, if you land a free parking, you get 500 bucks. Oh, let's yeah. put the taxes there too. Oh, oh some of the community chest says you got to buy. And uh, apparently this is just a made up thing. It doesn't doesn't exist in the real rules. So this is a real rule. This is, is a real rule. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. I have, uh, by the way, I've looked into making a, um, a Clarion Monopoly board and you can, it, it doesn't cost that much, a hundred bucks or so, $120. 
And you you go online and you lay out the board with the oh, cards and everything, neat. and then we and then intriguing. We and then we print them. Wow. <laughs> I know. And they send them to you in a box and it depends on how many we get. So wow. uh, we might want to look into, I mean, there's, there's different places to do it with different pricing. So I'll, I'll keep looking into that and maybe start making up some, some cards. Uh, Chloe and live edition. Justin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Chloe and live edition. That'd be cool. Right. And then, and then we got to figure out what the spaces are going to be. I'm sure there'll be a cape yeah. soft and a box soft and an owner soft. Well, I think I think you could group them and by no provide pro, provider. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, you've got a box soft yeah, and cape soft. Yeah. And obviously, you know, cape soft would be on the right as you come down towards <laughs> go. You know. Um, oh, you want to be the park place oh, of? Uh, yeah, you, you want yeah. to be the covered. But then you only get two spots. So. so. You know, that some stop velocity. Yeah. I don't know. Without them, we're not anything, right? So. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, I should. They be can be. They can be the ones right off to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sure not. I'm We're going to get in trouble here. <laughs> no, 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 no. I would be the most expensive. Seriously. Would we be here? No, we'd be somewhere else. We wouldn't even no, be somewhere else. else. Yeah. You got to appreciate that. All right. Uh, we have a feature presentation today. Bruce Johnson will be the shortest I'll be and doing most boring. The shortest, most boring webinar you've ever seen. That's right. So you wonder why we're padding here. We just want like, to get, to get my yawns ready here. I, sh I should be getting my yawns ready. Okay. I'll be yeah, yeah. Prepared. <gasps> like that. I should have got a yawn sound here, but I, I didn't. So well. Uh, anyway. Oh, look, I didn't clear out the bottom part. Well, April 8th is fine. And then Mike's going to be with us next week. That's good. You know, I did like three webinars like last month myself. Yeah. Good job, no, John. You did crazy. a lot. Yeah. I know. I just, We got to stop this. Someone else has got to be doing uh, these things. And and they are, but it's still well, the same and of course not completely yourself. I, I was on hand for two of them, so which I very much appreciate. Yeah, and the panel was cool and everything. So yeah, we'll just do more panels. Panels are fun. See, I can do one code. of the Fridays at some point on the. Um, you know, yes. I said about reusing the windows in the docking and reusing and so on, and that's now taking real shit. I mean, we've always been able to do it, but. The latest is pretty good. Got the parameters and so on. So, put us down for a Friday once I'm back in the UK and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, believe it when we see it, Andy. Okay. I I owe my own. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to put anybody else off. We want people to join. We want uh, new content. Dear. Pulling your leg, pulling your leg. I know, I know. Uh, Clarionlive at gmail .com. That's where you can reach us. And what was? Oh, what's this, Bruce? CIDC 2020 Africa. CIDC 2020. coming in 20 September. That's that date is ever firmer. Um, although one of these days I'm going to need to go down to the hotel and introduce myself because everyone I dealt with <laughs> two and a half years ago pushed off. Oh, Hotels right. did not do very well during COVID. It must be said. Mm. So they've got all new staff. So, but we are we are written in on their book. So yeah, that's happening. That's a thing. Please don't make me say any more about it because, you know, it feels like we've been talking about it for two and a half years now. It does. I was saying, I was saying Bruce, last week, um, just before the webinar, um, I still had a travel alert set up um, to do with South African travel. And the one came through and you relaxed the uh, the requirements it's, even more, which, we, which yeah. is great, I think. That's yeah. positive. So for, from a travel point of view, they dropped the PCR test requirement. Mm -hmm. So people now mm -hmm. come in fully vaccinated. That's pretty much all you got to do. If, you, if you're not vaccinated, you need a PCR test. But um, And then the state of disaster was lifted. And so, yeah, they keep relaxing the rules. They, they're going to do it kind of every month now, I think. Um, there's more or less no rules at the moment. Um, masks inside, public places, that kind of thing. But... That's and that's pretty, pretty much, much the same state they brought it to here in Ontario. But but the thought is that, that it's only that way at the moment because uh, the uh, the current government has got an election coming up in three or four weeks and they don't <laughs> want to piss off people because they also have yeah. been saying due to all the various different tests and statistics, we're actually into the sixth wave and it's bigger than any other wave we've had so far. But yeah, we're not expected to wear masks or anything like that. So. No. We'll see, I mean, how I mean, that, I mean, see how it all plays out. Yep, yeah, exactly. Just stop okay. counting. <laughs> yeah, well that, yeah, that's think, one I of the things the whole... is they stop counting. They're doing it all with wastewater tests and hospitalization yeah. numbers and yeah, et cetera. Well, it's the hospitalizations which are important. Case numbers aren't important, but True. True. hospitalization is important. And um, yeah, I mean, it, with each wave, more people get immunity one way or the yeah. other. So it's a, 
and and obviously the highly vulnerable groups are now the ones who've who've vaccinated mm -hmm. and yeah. you know so the yeah there's a lot of cases yeah. but that doesn't mean anything there's a lot of cases of flu every winter yeah. and they have just opened up a fourth of uh, uh, fourth vaccinations now here in ontario for anybody six year older so yeah. it's kind of they're, they're trying to stay on top of it as well as they can yeah yeah, but gonna, they do know that everybody's sick of sick of it. But, yeah, uh, sick of being sick. <laughs> I was going to hold off on my booster until um, August, probably right before I come to this, so I'm maximal immune. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> got everything that they got. Well, you've oh. had it, haven't you? Didn't you get it? Yeah, was, I did. You got yep. it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like <laughs> you know, how many times do you want to? How many antibodies do you need? Is the question. It's a good question. Can you have too many? I don't think you can. Well, yeah, and it does start waning after about three months. So, yeah, that's why I thought I'd wait until August or so, maybe a month ahead. Yeah. Anyway, um, Nyanta's user group meeting. There was one this week. It was. Um, and he was there. It was. Uh, it was quiet. It was. Yeah, uh, we had. It was more discussion based. I don't think we actually did much screen sharing. It was more discussion. Oh, we did, we did a couple. Yeah, but it was uh, there was some general chit chat uh, regarding uh, Chilcat on um, payment gateways, future and current uh, support, um, Signiflow. Uh, you know, there's been some movement on that, which is good, uh, and that's that's been updated accordingly. And um, email changes, that kind of thing, and new e email task class changes, and then we chatted about uh, docking panes and the next update. The thing goes on about a minute ago, where where we are really pushing this reusable window type content. But that was really it. It was a uh, it was it was good. It was just quiet. Did John not make you rewrite something? No, no, I got off lightly. Oh. No, but I'm waiting patiently for the next update so I can <laughs> things work oh, a little better. Than they and, are. and he's and he's planning a <laughs> webinar, John. He, he hasn't got time for your updates. Okay, all right. Okay, I think you were, John, you were just uh, glad, to, glad to know it really is behaving itself. Um, oh, good. Really chuffed with it. Excellent. Um, then there was an, an open webinar on Wednesday. It was. Who was there? I was there. I was there. I think I was there. I think it was all there. Eh? Full, full Everybody was there. Compliment. Everybody was there. Was I there? Yeah, you were there. I was there. I was I there. Remember. Yes, yeah. yes mm -hmm. I was there. Um, there was a question regarding the JSON uh, passing it. Uh, so, so Michael was having an issue with um, web services, being client web services, and uh, we got him sorted out. And then... Uh, super tagging? Uh, uh, TXA? There was a super tagging question. Yeah, Mike. I think it was more a TXA question, screen. really, but but yeah. And then well, actually, it was uh, a global settings change that that happened sort of along the way that he didn't. And then someone was, it was asking about something that Andy done because I said oh WP cube P, um, that's right filling PDF in PDF editing. forms yeah yep there we go and editing yeah and then last but not least I've got I've put the notes on and it was um Michael uh, tab new selection. So he wanted to trap yeah, uh, when you change the tab. A, all right. right. Yeah, but we that, had a that led into a good conversation. About, yeah. yeah, a little discussion about use equates and and how they work and what they are and everything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Voice FEQ. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. And then there was a NetTalk user group meeting. There was. And uh, we had a few questions. One uh, about changing dates for international users, changing date formats to something sane, because the, the poor guy, he's, he's written for the American market. So... You know, he's using a date format that's, well, archaic, really. Um, and, and very obscure. A, yeah, <laughs> best way to really. describe it. <laughs> and, and so now he's going out in the real world and discovering that, you know, they don't use the, the imperial system and um, all, the, all the terrible things that, you know, uh, gallons and, and yards. And yeah, he has to do that. Um, Edward, gave, Edward gave us some feedback on SQL about... He was using SQL with um, the thread pooling turned on and getting some issues with the SQL database there, which went away when he turned thread pooling off. So that's something interesting to look into. Um, not sure exactly what's happening there, but interesting. Um, Alex had some questions about um, horizontal browsers. So the idea that like you see on the Clarion Live front page where you have all those boxes, that's a browse and how to create that and how to do all of that. We talked about some CSS stuff and then we talked about um, capturing parameters from the address box. 
And then John had a long involved question in a legacy program that he's hacked and omitted code. And I don't know if you made any progress, John. I'm waiting for you, Bruce. <laughs> I'm waiting for Andy. I'm waiting for Bruce. I'm probably going to be waiting for Mike eventually to do something, something for me. I'm just so demanding. I have all these needs. And, and I you just, need, you need, you need. Huh? I just hope you guys will solve solve them, solve the problem. That's our job. Solve the world's problems. Yeah, there, there was there was quite a bit of drama between Bruce and I on on that question. So, but I think we need to. I think I think that's what's lacking in these webinars is we need more drama. We need yeah, more, more conflict things. Yes, because you know people watch things where there's conflict and there's that's true. Well, given yeah. given that I have today the webinar on the one true and only right way of doing something, I'm sure <laughs> it, it will take five minutes and then everyone will agree with me, and then we can go home. Oh, okay. You know, I, I know Fair Mike enough. and Andy certainly wouldn't. Do disagree. we have a, a running um, uh, record as to what the shortest and longest webinars and such are? I know I've well, got the longest in terms of a serial series you've of got the longest series. 14. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I got to figure the longest one's got to be an Andy Wilton special because I mean, they could go, they go days sometimes. Um, <laughs> I know we have done a, a three and a half, four hour. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I've watched, now. you know, Avengers Endgame and Infinity <laughs> War back to back and Andy's still going. Um, you know, John's still it's, talking, it's, John's still asking. <laughs> 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 it's just yeah. tradition. I mean, the very, very first webinar we had, Andy did the very first webinar and we said, can you come on? And we, we got about two hours and he was on for like over three hours, as I recall. It just was yeah. going on. It was like, yeah. okie dokie. That's, and that's what we do now. Here we and go. two hours, Andy's 20 minutes in, they figured out how to start the recording. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's, the, <laughs> it's well, the shortest recording, but the longest webinar. <laughs> it is the shortest recording. Is It's we were unfamiliar with a lot of things and uh, we had a recorder going and then that was like separate though from the go to a webinar and it crashed and lost it. And then we learned that, oh, you can just push the record button. And that's what we did for the rest of uh, all time. <laughs> so, all right, anyway, so we're here, here we are. We have a feature presentation with Bruce Johnson, how to upgrade your Clarion install. So Indeed. you can. I can do what I need to do, yeah, just share I'll my screen. It. And I will make you a, a co-host, Bruce, after you're done. Sure. Will you, though? Will you? Maybe. All right. This is this this uh, presentation is, is a little different to normal, because actually what I'm trying to do is show you how to do something that's really, really, really simple. Um, it literally will take five minutes to explain, and then, you know, we'll do it. And 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 then I'll I'll show you. Uh, one additional thing you can do, but the reality is you don't even have to do that. Um, and the reason that this webinar came up was because uh, there was a thread on Claren Hub about something. And I said, but this is a solved problem. This is not something. And then there seems some some, um, some confusion about that. And then I see um, posts in the news groups and people say, oh, you know, must I upgrade my Claren? Must I upgrade my Claren? What's the new build? Is it okay? Is it not okay? Should I upgrade? Should I upgrade? And, and there's this almost like this, this hold back and wait until someone anoints this build and says it's okay and whatever. And the reality is that it's so completely trivial to have multiple builds going that it's quicker to install the thing than it is to ask the question on Claren Hub or the news groups or whatever. And so I, would, I was just going to demonstrate the way I do it. And it doesn't take any time and it always just works. And it's completely backward, uh, you can roll back with no effort at all. So let me show you what I mean. And for purposes of this, I'm going to use um, some in an install, one of the Clarion installs, I haven't actually picked which one yet, but um, that's not important. The, the, you would do this uh, for a Clarion patch update. You would do this if you were installing, let's say you were going from Netalk 11 to Netalk 12, you would do this exact same thing. All right, the exact same process. Whenever you're doing a huge big update, uh, you're going from Niantis version four to Niantis version five, and you're like worried about what's all gonna break and how's this gonna work and how do I roll back? And th this is just this process, right? I'm gonna go to my C drive and I'm gonna go to my Claren 11 folder there. Okay, so if I currently run Claren 11, it runs out of that folder. Whatever is in there is, is what's running. And now I've got a new Claren 11 build to install. So what I do straight up is I copy this folder and I copy it 
to a name, well, I copy it, to a name which represents what it currently is. So let me run Clarion 11 here, and we'll have a look, see what it currently is. There we go. Uh, you can't see that pop open. Okay, there's my Clarion 11. And I do this from Clarion, uh, with this, like 11.1, I would do the same thing. All right, so this is Clarion 11, and this is uh, 13630. So I'm just going to name it that. I'm going to close Clarion while I do this, 13630. So I go Control C, Control V, and it's going to copy. And it's quite a big folder, so this is going to take a minute or two to do. And we can waffle while this happens. I think there's a few, I think this one's quite big actually. It's probably about 10 gigabytes in here. Um, because I put my examples in my current folder. So when I do this process, I get all my examples cloned as well. Um, if you like, you can have your examples out in some other folder. That's, the, this process would be exactly the same. doesn't make Is any there difference. any particular reason why you put your examples in your Clarion folder? Yeah, they're just, it's, uh, I've got examples that match what's in these builds. So if I've installed Network 11 into it, I get all my Network 11 examples. If I've installed Network 12 into one of them, I get my Network 12 examples and so on. So I've got, because I do this process with accessories as much as I did with Clarin itself, um, it's helpful to have the examples. Plus, well easy to find them. I spend my life opening and closing examples, which is probably not true for most people, but between the webinars and, and obviously the work that I do building classes and so on, um, I'm, I'm diving in and out of apps. And so having a very small, short path, the idea of having the examples off in app data somewhere, it's, it's too hard to get to. So I just have it in, I don't even put in accessory examples. I just have a Clarion 11 backslash examples. Um, and that's where everything is. In fact, Softlosty got their own folder in there. <laughs> so one of the folders in there is Softlosty and I put their stuff in there. It just, um, I type the stuff, so I keep in the names short and so on. Um, I also would not install Clarin into your program files folder. When, no, no, um, that's, that's dangerous. No. There's once upon a time, there was a, a thing to do that. And that's particularly why Clarin moved their settings out. Clarin moved their examples out. They go, I say Clarin, um, soft loss, move their examples out. It, it's just not, it's not helpful. Your program files folder in Windows is for programs. Um, not data. The problem with Clarin is that to, to a large extent, the program is the data. It's, it's all kind of smushed together. Like your template registry, for example, is in your Clarin 11 slash uh, template slash win folder. But the registry is data. It's not program. So now you, oh, well, hang on. Let's put the registry. So, no, you just end up yeah. with a mess. Yeah, so for them, like a you know, lib source and everything else is really yeah, program it, you know, data. Oh. It's yeah, is a program, is it data? Do you want to read it? What if you want to edit it? What if you want to write? It's like life is too short. So I put all my Clarins and you can see I've got lots of them. I mean, there's no, I'm not particularly, um, I, I'm not suggesting you should have lots of them. I think you need two. The production one, the one that you're currently using to ship code out of and an experimental one, which is the one that you're going to go to, you're thinking of going to, you want to know if it's okay and so on. This can surely not take 22 minutes. I have a question. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I'm just, oh, just going to say the, the only exception I would have is not an exception, just on uh, probably in addition to that is uh, I, I have a, basically a, a Clarion setup if I'm for a per application. So if I'm working on a particular application, I know that that Clarion setup is for that application. I can play yes. about in my test, I can play about in uh, others, so on and so forth. But you know, so so I would have. I do have a few, but I uh, I do have um, them per particular application, main application that is, not demos okay. and stuff like that. So clearly, I'm not going to wait 22 minutes for that thing to copy. So I'm going to cheat. It um, would be a really boring we webinar if we just sat <laughs> if we and watched what, the copy, copy for, for 22 20 minutes. I told so you it was going to be boring. I told I, you. I could call this <laughs> Clarion 11 production or I could call it Clarion 11. Um, and, and what I sometimes do is put like a, a, a thing, but I'm going to, I'm just going to call it production. All right. Now, clearly I'm going to just, I'm going to cherry pick the folders out of there. Cause I know which one is the big one. And then and we can just not copy that. We'll get rid of that thing. Go away. 
Yeah, I don't this like is... using Windows Explorer to do any kind of file operations, or uh, unless they're like really tiny little, just move a little uh, bit of stuff around. Every, but for anything big, to... I just drop to DOS and do it there. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, you could do that too. Um, okay, so I'm remember I'm copying my current one to to a, a, a now it's going to be a new one, but in fact it's an old one. So uh, let me just copy Claren eleven. Uh, oh, so it's everything except examples. I have a lot of examples. Something like six hundred. Probably don't need backup either, but whatever. No. It's empty. I, I believe it's empty. Oh, is it? Okay. Okay. It's okay. close to empty. Anyway. That's what I was going to uh, ask so, about because my backup always gets a lot of stuff in it. Quite so full. I would, yeah, I end up. I like to go and from... delete all that stuff before doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's substantially less. Yeah. My examples. I have a lot. I, I counted once. I think before the 2019 CIDC. I think I counted just we we ship alone somewhere over 600 different apps or examples. Um, and a lot of those end up being compiled, which means that they end up with generated files and yada, yada, yada in my whole system. So, um, yeah, that's why there's, there's like eight meg, eight gigs of that examples folder. Hopefully this, oh, this will take four minutes, which is somewhat less. Um, but do we, we can pretend I just copied my Claren folder, which is what I do for reels. I just copy that Claren folder. It's going to take 20 minutes. I'll walk away, come back 20 minutes time. Do, 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 do. This is boring, Bruce. It's supposed to be, Mike. This, <laughs> this, this should really be boring. Now, what amazes me is that people don't do the step. So they go, oh, no, they just got the latest Claren patch and they just stole straight into the Claren 11, which is fantastic until you discover there's a problem for whatever reason. And then it's like, well, how do I roll back? Oh, now I've got to reinstall everything from scratch. Or they go the complete other way. They say, no, 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 I never install over the top of my folder. I, I always install into a clean folder and then I reinstall every third party I've got and then I reapply every change. I, it's no. Any no, particular reason why you wouldn't just use, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm just blanked on it here. Uh, like you just set up a code repo and do it that way. Sure. I mean, source that, control. That, yeah. That would, that, yep. If you've got source control, same difference. You, you just uh, you branch it. Yeah. Um, uh, exactly. you, yeah. Or tag it uh, or something. Whatever. Let's but just work. make a backup is ultimately the lesson here. Well, it's not so much a backup is that it's a working folder. All right. And that comes mm. into play in a, in a moment because this production folder is still live. It's still completely working, still perfectly capable of compiling my Claren apps. In fact, I can move my app between production and experimental with one menu selection. Um, and that's what makes it so easy to go, okay, well, I'm just going to compile my stuff for a couple of weeks in experimental. And I'm just going to, in your normal day-to-day -day stuff, you're compiling, you're running, you're comp you know, testing stuff and whatever, you'll get a very quick feel for whether the thing works or is completely broken. And if it's completely broken, you, you don't do anything. You just go to your menu item and say, oh, I'm going to use my production environment. Um, and it jumps back to that, you recompile, and now your program is as, exactly as it was. Um, this is also very good for like uh, guys saying, oh, I'm going from network 11 to 12 and that sounds big and scary and a big thing jump. And I, well, you can take your one application, compile it with network 11. Um, then you can compile it with network 12. Then you can compile it with network 11. Then you can compile it with network 12. It's, you just oscillate between the two. Uh, it's not a, if you move forward, you're always going forward kind of system. And it's not a, oh, I'll have to restore that from backup and lose all the work I've done kind of system, which seems to me what people are doing, which is just bonkers, because why would, why would you do that? Um, so, all right. Like I say, boring. Replace the file on the disk. Whatever the hell that is, CHW. Hey, replace it. Okay. So here's my, this is my production folder. And this is like still perfectly live. Not a problem at all. Um, here's my Claren 11 folder. And I'm going to install my new patch into Claren 11. So I'm going to go find my Claren patches. Claren, oops. Uh, X Claren updates. Claren 11, gold. And I've got all the builds. And what's which one am I going to install? I'm going to install this guy here. Why not? Um, this is my latest Claren 11 patch. So I'm going to install this one. And I'm going to run this install. Um, and it works the same 
if you've got again if you you know you're doing a big accessory update i'm sure andy stuff lets you pick which folder you're installing into um certainly ours does i accept the license agreement without reading it uh, i'll do a custom install uh sure why not that looks all right now notice i'm installing where it actually remembered where it last installed clarin 11 to which is c clarin 11 so i'm going to use c clarin 11 as my experimental folder for want of a better word right my my day-to-day -day driver folder um so that's the one I'm going to install into. I don't need a shortcut. I've got one of those already. And I run the install. And it doesn't matter what you call the folders. As you saw with mine, I've got, I've got a bunch of Claren 8s. I've got a bunch of Claren 9s, 10s, 11s. I've got an 11.1 .1 in here somewhere there. I've got an 11.1 .1 any screen somewhere. Uh, I might have taken it out. Um, I've, I, that one I was experimenting with the Ninja templates. This one is for PDF tools and so on and so on. You can see I, I go to town with this, but I'm a little different because I need some of these old things for doing examples in and so on. All right, so it's finished. It's installed. That's great. If you get a reboot message, it's a good idea to reboot. What it means is you had Clarin open when you did the install. And so the installer wasn't able to replace some of the DLLs and uh, you just made a mistake. You should close Clarin before you have to create Clarin. I didn't mention that, but I suppose I should have. You should close it first. All right, so now I've got Clarin 11 there, which is my new one. And I've got Clarin prod, which is my old one. Those, those are the only two you're gonna have, right? You, know, you, you might have more, but those are the two you're gonna have. Now my shortcut on my desktop, I didn't add a new one, but my shortcut, which is one of these, there, that shortcut, still points to the right place it's still pointing to that folder which has now got the new one so mm -hmm. my shortcut always points to the latest one which is why i do this rename the production one back out and and not have a clarin one experimental folder um so here's my clarin 11 is that right that's my clarin 11. i only ask because these icons for some reason keep moving windows has got this idea that i should move my recently pressed stuff up to the top and it's horrible all right, so here's McLaren 11, okay? And this is what's known as the current version. When we talk about builds, say McLaren version, this one is the current version. You can see it's the one that's on at the moment. But I'm gonna add my production version. Now, again, if you just have two folders, this is only something you're gonna have to do once. Um, but you go to tools, options, oh, bring them in, McLaren versions and then the world's weirdest interface you go to this drop down which you probably have nothing in it because you haven't done this before or you don't have lots of things and you pick new version which for some reason now makes a new version I, 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 yeah okay don't get me started see i'm going to pick out my clarin 11 prod clarin 11 prod that's the new one okay i go in there and i go to bin well, uh, it's the new one and the old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't get bogged down in that. <laughs> I know what you mean, but don't, don't, don't get bogged down. All right. So notice it's got a name. So I'm going to call this prod or 11 prod or C11 prod or whatever you want to call it. That's my production. Um, and notice it's picked out that folder. Notice it's picked out these folders. All right. It's got my redirection file from there it's got all my compilers none of that matters you it'll just work although you'd still gonna... have to add all of your um extra search if you had other search redirection files and such your lib source Abs folders absolutely yeah. if if, yeah. if you've messed with yeah, yeah 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 if you've if you're familiar with this and you've added more stuff here you'll add more stuff here yes yeah. but but again for joe public who's not done this you literally the, the magic is learning that you can add new yeah. by dropping this yeah, thing there's down. There's really only two folders down there anyway. So yeah. For most people. And, then, yeah. and you say, okay. So now I've got a program. All right. So let's, let me pull up a random program. Now that's a really interesting thing to do. Um, notice I'm still in current version. 
current version, current version. So now if I open up a program, oh, I want to open something that's okay. Um, I'm not opening a Clarin example now, right? Pretend I'm opening my actual program. I don't have one local on this machine, but anyway, um, I'm opening my actual program. There it is. It's in C Bruce apps, whatever, however you've got it. And I open it and I can go ahead and compile it. And I'm now compiling against the new Clarin. All my accessories are still in here. I haven't installed any other accessories. I haven't had to um, go and fiddle with whatever I needed to fiddle with and anything like that. This is the new build of Clarin as it was shipped by Softlosty. And the only difference between this one and the prod folder is that I've run the next patch in here. I know Mike, but stay with me. Mm -hmm. um, so I can just compile and run it. Okay. And so straight away, I can see, well, does my app compile? Do I suddenly get compile errors? Is there like a major, like, oh my word, something doesn't seem to be right here at all. I, I think I need help, but you know what? Um, I'm not gonna waste any time on it. I'm sure someone in the news groups would tell me what I need to do. Um, I'll post a note there saying such and such happened or I got this error or whatever, whatever, whatever. But let's pretend that didn't compile, that didn't run, something bad went happen. You say, cool, I just close the app. I leave the solution open, close the app. Uh, we don't need these files, they're not important. Um, I go to build, set configuration, uh, clear version to prod there, there we go. I'm now, you can see up the top here in C11 prod, which is what I had at the start of this webinar, 20 minutes ago. Now I can open my demo app. I'm currently still using the new IDE, but that's almost never an issue. I, I can't remember an IDE that's been broken actually along the way. Um, the runtimes, the class library, the compiler, yes, 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 but the IDE, not mm -hmm. so much. You can still run the old IDE. I just ran this from a shortcut in, um, in C Clarin 11, right? But I could go and make a shortcut to C Clarin 11 prod if the IDE was a problem. But now I'm compiling the program and this is exactly what I compiled an hour ago. In other words, it's the exact same classes, libraries, accessories, everything. If this was Network 11, this would be Network 11. If I installed Network 12 into my, what is now Clarin folder, then I can compile this program in 11, I can compile it in 12. Dum -dum. And that's all, right? I got perfect backwards rollback, as many versions as I want. Now, most people don't keep lots of versions. So this will happily survive. I'll, I'll use the new Clarin one and it'll be fine. And I'll think it's fine. I'll do some tests. I'll ship the new one. Um, six months will go past. Softlast will bring out a new one. So I'll say, cool, I'll delete the prod folder. I'll copy this current Clarin to prod. I'll install the next build into Clarin. And I've got one experimental folder and one production folder. And I can move forward and backwards. If you want more going back, sure, you can have those. Yeah, but and instead not. of calling a prod, call it prod, and then maybe tack the date on the end, just so you could potentially what, have chronological yeah, have, prod folders. Yeah. yeah, and and I do the exact same thing for accessories. So people write to me and say, oh, I'm, I'm struggling with Network 12, uh, Network 11. And well, cool, I've got a Clarin 11 that's got Network 11 in it. So I don't even change my IDE. I just go, oh, okay. Uh, Let's go to the build, set Clarin version. I've got a network 11 folder and now I could compile the thing with against network 11. And cunningly, this will have a different Clarin because I don't patch my Clarin in every folder every time. And that can be useful as well. When I open this up, I can see, oh, okay, this Clarin is actually three versions back or whatever. It's not normally an issue one way or the other. So any life-changing moment in your system, you can absolutely just clone the Clarin folder now you've got a baseline to work from that you can always go back to and then you experiment with a new one. I do what Andy does is that we have a separate folder for our commercial products. And in fact, they're not even on this. They're not even on my machine. They're on a network server, uh, which I will find. Um, so anyone in the company can actually bring up the environment for any of the products. So I've got a Claren environments and there they all are. And some of these are old, some of them are new. That's a Claren 10 folder. And currently I've been working on Fastware this week and it's I'm using a Claren 10 environment, but I'm actually using the 11 IDE. 
And I just picked out Fastwin as the thing and uses that. And then that's got a fixed set of you know, accessories. I, I know I can pick it up at any point, compile it, and I'll get just that one little change. I don't have to worry that, oh, I've upgraded 10 accessories since I lasted a build, and what's that going to affect, and all that kind of thing. At some point, I go, oh, it's time for Fastwin to catch up, and I'll install everything. I'll make a Fastwin prod and a Fastwin experimental, and then I'll, you know, put all the new stuff in the experimental, and then we move forward. Um, it's a very, very effective system. It's trivial to do. Do it as much or as little as you want to. I recommend you do at least two, the production and the experimental one. And then at the very least, we go back to the title of the webinar, how to install your Clarin updates. You copy your current folder to production. You install the thing into your Clarin folder. And now you've got two things to work against and you can play backwards and forwards. It's really not hard. So how much effort do you expend uh, in terms of systems to try and keep track of which versions of your stuff is out there using which versions of Clarion? Or none. do you just kind of say, Absolutely hey, you know what? Absolutely none. none. I'm, okay. I'm, they, 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 that matrix is way too large. Mm -hmm. um, that, I mean, I, I do builds of stuff. I, I did three builds yesterday morning. I mean, it, it's like, the, the, no, that matrix is impossible. Yeah. Um, in fact, these days, I almost never look in Clarin 9. I spend a lot of time in Clarin 8 because all our examples are shipped out of Clarin 8 so that they'll work right. in any version of Clarin. 9, I haven't opened for, for a long, long time. 10, I think I used, I think one or two, well, like, like Fastman is using 10, but I, I'm not using this. These Clarin 10 folders I don't use. I use that. That Fastman is compiled in 10. Um, 11, obviously, a reasonable amount in 12. So most of my stuff will be around 11, 11.1. .1. Um, and obviously, Network 11, Network 12, I, I, because I do a reasonable amount of support for Network 11 as well. Mm. Um, Mark says, what about moving between versions where Clarion changes the digital app structure? So Mark, what's interesting about that is that this system completely doesn't care about that with one proviso. So I can open, let me show you this. I can actually open this. In fact, I could have done this as an example. Let me get rid of that and that and that. Where's my Clarin? Yeah, it's my current Clarin. All right. This is my current Clarin, it's 11.1. .1. And when I'm opening up Fastwin, which I did this week, um, the app that I'm gonna open is in Clarin 11.1. .1. The dictionary is in Clarin 11.1. .1 format. That's why it opens up in the Clarin 11 IDE. But in fact, I'm going to compile it. That solution was last open with Fastwin. Yes, I do. Um, I'm going to compile it. It's going to use the Clarin 10 compiler classes, libraries, everything else. Um, I can't open this dictionary and this application in Clarion 10. If I want to go back to the Clarin 10 IDE for reasons, then I would export the dictionary to TXD, uh, DCTX rather. I would export the app. I would have to go and into Clarin 10 and import from those two things. I almost never do though. I, like I say, I, I haven't had a problem with the IDE. The IDE being separate from the templates, being separate from the classes and so on. The IDE itself, I, I, I don't, I cannot remember actually a regression in the IDE that, that ever drove me backwards. Um, off the top of my head, maybe someone else can. But worst case, and, and that would only happen between major Clarin versions. So like, for example, from Clarin 10 to Clarin, when in fact, Clarin 10 and Clarin 11, cunningly, don't change your dictionary or your app file. Clarin 11 to 11.1 .1 does. No, I lie, it doesn't, or it does. I don't think it does. And nine, let's, let's pick a different one. Nine to 9.1 .1 .1 did, 9.1 .1 to 10 did. Um, but it, it's just not a factor, I don't, particularly want to work in the Clarin 10 IDE. In fact, I particularly don't want to work in the Clarin 10 IDE. Um, uh, 10 to 11 to 11.1 .1, uh, does change this mark. Oh, I had apps in 11 that I, I did take back to 10 and open up in 10 mark. Maybe the dictionary changed, but I don't think the apps changed between 10 and at least from, oh, let, me, yeah, I, let me not, let me not, um, it was a long time ago. But, but I keep the apps in the current IDE version. Obviously, 
um, you know, if the current ID version is so trashed that it's just, no, I think firstly, you'll find that out pretty quick. If you pay any attention to the news groups or the Skype chats, that'll come up pretty quick. Um, and worst case, worst, you come in here, you export and you go back. Or if let's say it trashed it so badly, you, you, you know, well then yes, restore from backup. Backups don't go away. Backups are still your friend. But if it literally trashes the app on opening it, um, you, you, you haven't lost anything anyway. You just restore your backup app. Wolfgang says, Bruce, clarion ID is on your local machine and the app dictionary and source files, like classes, are on a shared folder in the network. Um, yes. Well, so for our production stuff, yes, Wolfgang, because we've got um, multiple people in the office. And while we mostly work on our own stuff, there are times when someone's on leave and someone else has to go fix a bug. Um, I want to be able to pick it up with Jeff's environment for that program. I'm going to compile Veculum. I'm going to pick up the Veculum environment. And I know that's what Jeff is compiling it against. Um, so I can compile it and get a byte identical version. That's really important. Um, that just gives us continuity going forward. So in that situation, yes, the, the whole Clarion environment, that Clarion folder is, is out on the network. Which one did I have it? Uh, it's on, it's, yeah, it's on Morph. Oh, no, that's extra. Hang on, it's on Morph. We don't even map a drive to it. You, you don't have to use a map drive. You can just map the environment. So Morph, and we've got these shared Clarion environments. So these are all shared. I can, I can yeah, pick this out. If you look at my versions, it's backslash, backslash, Morph, Clarion environment specimen. Um, so that's all That's all on the network. But obviously for my personal work, again, because of the classes and stuff like that, um, the others aren't interested in it. And so for my personal work, I, it's all on my C drive, which is a little bit quicker, if I'm fair, um, mostly because my C drives are SSD. So, you know, a, a network drive is, is a C drive, but, but the benefits outweigh the um, slight time delay. If it's too slow, you can always upgrade your infrastructure. Don't get bogged down by the fact I've got lots of them. That's just because of the kinds of things I have to work in. Um, I'm saying you should have two. That's that's my, that's, you just need two. And now you've got always one that you're completely happy with and one that you're putting all your new stuff into. Um, That's, that's really all I have to say, hence the world's shortest webinar, John. Finish before the top of the hour. Unless anyone has any other comments to throw in without muddying the water. No? Seems reasonable. The, uh, Mike the, says, huh. if upgrading, say Network 11 to 12, but keeping the same Claren version, in other words, I've got a Network 11 in Claren 11 and a Network 12 in Claren 11, what do you do? A little confused on that, nothing. I've now got a Claren 11, which I called that, and I installed Network 11 into that, right? Well, in fact, I, when I made that, it had Network 11. Now Bruce is coming along and saying, hey, I'm gonna make a Network 12, yay. <laughs> so I'm making, my current folder currently is this guy here. Actually, it's this guy here. He's got Network 12 installed in him. Um, the reason I have this one is because I'm currently working in 11.1 .1, and I wanted an 11.0 Network 12 version. Um, so I just made a version. And I can open up an application and compile it against Network 11. And I can open it up and compile it against Network 12. And if I don't like it, I go back. They, with Network, there's one, Network is very clever. And Network 12 added two new buttons. So when you go back to 11, it says, what are these two buttons? Um, and there's a list of buttons in one of the templates. And you just go into that list and take those two buttons out. That's, that's the only trick to going back from 12 to 11. Um, but no, otherwise, you, you know, you can compile it up in 12 and see what happens. If you don't like it, you can compile in 11. And then you write and tell me what you don't like or what happened or whatever. And I write and say, oh, no, you just need to make sure your settings are this or you pick that style or whatever. And not working, you can try it again. And then it's the same app file over and over and over again. It's so easy. Clarence has had this since Clarence 7. <laughs> it's like Grums JP was teaching us how to do this stuff. He was using this to compile Clarence 6 stuff. Um, I, I, it's built right into the system. We just use it, and then upgrades become so unbelievably painless. Yeah, and I, you opened with the, so the, the 
the comment that everybody says, hey, is such and such a version safe to use? I think it's not necessarily just the fear of how do I do this upgrade process, but if, I, if somebody knows it's broken, I, should I even bother looking at it? I, I don't want to well, be the person who's going to stub their toe if somebody's already you know, spurted absolutely. blood on the floor and uh, yeah. has figured out that it's not worthwhile. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not the worst idea in the world to – I installed it straight away, but that's okay because, you know, I can roll back. Um, yeah, it, you wait two days. Look at – keep your eye on the news groups. There's always chatter after a bolt. Mm. Yep. And straight away, you'll discover whether the thing's completely broken or it's broken for some guy who's got this little block of code or it's broken for some guy who's using, I don't know, Power Browse or something. Um, and yeah, but but I don't think one should be scared of these upgrades. Really, I think we have too much fear, which makes us put off upgrades, which means when we do the upgrade, it's been so long since the last one that our fear now becomes justified. It's a self-fulfilling fulfilling prophecy, right? It's like... Um, I've got a customer today. Well, today, this at the moment, he's he's upgrading from Claren Five. Uh, you know, of mm. course, it's going to be a tough upgrade. <laughs> he's going up twenty-two years. <laughs> it's like a lot has changed. Um, if we keep up, if we you know do your upgrades, really, I mean, it's not like Sophilosity is making a build every week, right? It really isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and so I go ahead and just use the experimental one until I notice it's broken. And then I just go back to the production one. Oh, I stay there until the next build comes out. It's, it's so painless to go backwards that I know why people are going, oh, let me wait and see if someone else tells me it's broken. But I mean, 24 hours, two days, that's enough. After that, yeah, stuff will come out that would work. But the only way you find that stuff out is by trying your application. Because everyone's application is different. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody could say it's awesome, and then you go to try and go. Well, hold on. Everybody said it was awesome, and my thing's <laughs> not working at all. I know, but by then, soft velocity have moved on so far. It's yeah. actually yeah. now you, it gets harder to debug that. It gets harder to get a, a, a reasonable fix out and yeah. stuff like that. So, and of course, we're all busy, and we're all hoping that, that somebody else will will uh, yeah. uh, suffer the the bumps and knocks and such things. But uh, it as you as you've indicated, it, it can be an issue. You commented that uh, that you don't do anything in C nine anymore because all your stuff's newer. But uh, one of the main systems I'm working on is still compiled in C nine. Uh, sure. And uh, and that's just the environment that they're. They, they say, they, well, we, they we know this runtime works here, and all these accessories work here, and blah blah yeah. blah. So, and that's exactly what we've got. My Fastwin environment is from Claren ten. Yeah. But I'm still using the Claren eleven point one IDE. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And, and the same thing in that in that environment, we're using Claren eleven, not eleven point one. We're using eleven there, but 11. hey, whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and similarly, uh, with with one of the other big projects I had uh, it was a Claren eleven again, but it was. Um, a C8 yeah. and actually C8 was special compilers that were the because Scott Ferret had been working on that, so he actually created special versions of the Clarion compiler to deal no with driver bugs. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a little special, but but they're like, but we're just not going to move to the new version because we don't know. Yeah, yeah, I like I say, I've I've I have not been stung by IDE issues, so maybe I'm just complacent there, but I'm very happy to move apps forward. Um, into the latest IDE, but keep the runtimes if you want. Right, yeah, um, which is what we're doing there, yeah, yeah. You know, when I move Fastwin forward, I'm not going to keep the, the Claren 10 version of Fastwin hanging around. I'm going to turf that. Mm -hmm. I'll keep it for you know, a month and then get rid of it. I don't, I don't need them going, oh, this was Fastwin in Claren 9 and this was Fastwin in Claren 8. I mean, there's, there's a limit to how useful the stuff is. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. There you go, John. I don't think we want to pad it i think it's a simple process just do it yes yes i think we i think we're it. all doing it i'm not i mean the hands up, i suppose let's do a quick poll hands up who is who does it this way or you know along the lines yeah, yeah, of this, using some, the some permutation of that yeah yeah for sure yeah mark's doing it on so the hands are all going up i mean I, yeah well not all not all we got three yeah, okay <laughs> Not two, someone's not sure. Um, yeah, okay. This is by far the easiest way to do it. So there you go. Everyone else learns something. And now if anyone asks, should I upgrade? I'm going to say, just just go watch the webinar. Stop messing around. Cool. 
you can take the screen back, John. Um, I'll do that. But I'll, I first want to say, Bruce, I noticed at the very bottom of your file explorer there that you have classify it, which is I do. available at www.onosoft.com for just $25. <laughs> Until the Dang, next release. Beat the drum, happens. beat the drum. <laughs> Until that happens. But um, I was going to show some a classified update today, but I didn't get it done. So I am planning on having a demo possible release on Wednesday on the open webinar. I'll show where we are. And um, I think you'll be happy, Mike. Cool. I think I like to be happy, John. <laughs> You, you know, you normal, we'll normally see. I'm a real curmudgeon. We'll and so, so yeah. I, I noticed, John, you made the wrong Bruce, the co-host. Did I? Well, I did the one that lost the co-host. No. You this is why you should, I keep asking you to name it so I know. And you don't well, it's it. easy to remember. I always log in yeah. to Zoom as Bruce because yeah. it's less typing. Right. The so Bruce you're Johnson. asking me to remember things. Is that right? Well, you know, I'm just saying, if you weren't in training, then... Uh, I could get John to do it, uh, Mike to do it, I guess. Hmm. I don't think I'm the host anymore. So. <laughs> no, you're co-host. Am I co-host? Can I even pull it? Can I even pull it over? Can, I, can a co-host make you a host? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm battling. You can. A if you're a co-host, uh, you can do everything a host can do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You too. Well, I okay. suppose then I could use my other co-host privilege to upgrade myself. Uh, John's made me a co-host. Yeah, uh, Q&A, yeah. there was a Q&A. Uh, Wolfgang says, my strategy is to clone the entire hard drive and to continue with the cloned drive. If I notice anything's broken, I take one of the previous hard drives on the shelf. And... No, yeah, it's way too complicated, Wolfgang. I mean, a backup's obviously a good idea, but I can switch forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards in one menu click. You're going to reinstall a hard drive from your cupboard. I feel, I feel, I feel my strategy is more uh, quick and easy. <laughs> quick and easy. I feel you're going to be like, I'm not installing this till I know it's better. I, let me try this again. I will not install this until I know it's perfect because it is so hard to go back because I have to go get an entire hard drive out of my cupboard. Never mind how long it takes to clone your entire hard drive. Not to mention the cost. But backups are good. I approve of backups. I, I do not mock your backing up the hard drive and storing that in cupboard. That is a good thing. Um, but I'm saying you can just clone the two folders. You can swap between them very, very quickly. You don't have to mess around. And I will note, Wolfgang, you're not always the fastest upgrader, are you? So maybe my point is uh, valid. Wolfgang likes to be efficient, though. All right. John. So we're going to wrap week? it up. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't need, I don't, like I said, the shortest, most boring webinar. Unless anyone has any other questions. <laughs> Wolfgang says, correct, he's frozen his IDE. Yeah, that's the point. That's the exact point I'm making, Wolfgang. Your approach is so hard that you, that you never upgrade. And that's, uh, that's, that's a pity because you're missing out on stuff. The 11 IDE is much better than 10, 11.1 IDE. Yeah, it's got some updates um, and so on. Just this morning in Clarence Hub, Carl was, someone was asking about, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we could do this? And Carl says, well, my IDE does that. And it was a recent update in the IDE. Cool. Go for it, John. Um, I'm going to say I'm a little distracted. There's a troll on the YouTube and I have to keep deleting their messages and locking them out. And it's just really? the same guy just changing IDs going on and on. So apologies to anyone there uh, who's watching YouTube and is being Joy distracted Blade as I Runner. am by the comments. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Yeah, it's a real pain here. There. We're getting there. You only have so many IDs, right? It's so annoying though. This has never really happened before. Okay, so that's that. So we're done. So um, I think there's anything else I needed to talk about. I don't think so. So with that, we will wrap up. Thanks everybody for coming. And I will run the credits, but wait, I'm gonna do, I gotta get rid of this. No, no, no. Stop share. There we are. Okay. Um,
I'm going to wave goodbye. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Bruce. It wasn't the shortest. Um, <laughs> Cheers, it everyone. Was, it was the boringest. So <laughs> yes. Yeah, we I'm done not that sure it was the boringest. But well, anyway, I'm really sorry. disappointed that you didn't let that copy finish. You know, I was looking forward to that 20 minutes. <laughs> 22 part. minutes of the copy, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that, 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 that's that, why that it seems... wasn't the boringest, because you, that, you, uh, <laughs> you could have done better, Bruce. Come on. Could have, so, I could have. You could have hit the, you know, set a real watermark there. You <laughs> All right, I'm going to go. Um, clean up my my uh, Robert room had a so question. I can put a pinball machine in there. Robert said, "Is kind of one stable? I have it installed, but not using it. Should I change? I would not use the 788 build of Claren One point eleven point one. There is a bug in there that is um, for for compiling general usage is is not nice. It it, it doesn't it doesn't tell you when a, a include file is missing, which is um, it just doesn't compile. Which is this the most recent version that just released? Yeah, yeah. The 788 build. Interesting. Um, it, you, you won't notice it if your files are all there. But a bunch of people notice that it just wouldn't compile stuff. It wouldn't compile a DLL. It wouldn't compile an exe. And partly, they upgraded in a different way. So now they hadn't finished. They, they were missing files for their yeah. system. And once you have that, this thing didn't tell you. It just wouldn't compile. And oh, it's a nightmare. So no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily use a 788. The one before was all right. Um, yeah. And like I say, you can switch backwards and forwards. Cool. I would use the 11.1 IDE against whatever your production environment is. Mm. It's just fine. Yeah, that's what I do. All right. We're wrapping up. Cool. Bruce, give me give me a Skype call as soon as we're done here. And I'll do, John. I appreciate that. And that's it. All right. Wave, everybody. <laughs> we're, One, we're, two, we're three, out. four. Yeah. Two, everyone. <laughs>